So we now continue our theme on uh, model specification issue and uh, I will uh, discuss the, the serious issue called omitted variable bias. So to motivate this, uh, this uh, theme, uh, let's now take a little bit more broader look at the econometric modeling and uh, I'll, I'll discuss it in terms of the, uh, our hedonic model of uh, housing market that we have uh, examined quite thoroughly. So uh, like in this case, if in very, very often in uh, empirical modeling, there are usually some kind of uh, core variables that, that, that clearly belong to the model that we are, we are primarily interested in. So for example, uh, we started this uh, hedonic modeling exercise uh, just with the uh, this, uh, price of the apartment and size in square meters. And, uh, and like in this case, also in many other applications, there are typically nowadays a lot of data available and, and we might have some variables that are uh, sort of secondary importance that, uh, that uh, we might include in the, in the model, but, uh, but we also might, might be more or less indifferent. So, for example, we had just kind of dummy variables like uh, the elevator or energy class. And uh, from the outset, it's not Im immediately clear that would, for example, the energy class be relevant or or, or not. And uh, in, uh, in other applications, it's, it's, um, it can be also, also many, many other variables that, uh, that uh, might be of interest, but, uh, but we are not entirely sure. And in some sense, uh, the, the value of the empirical modeling and econometric modeling should be also that we are learning from the data that, that, uh, that uh, which variables are, are, uh, are useful and, and helpful explanations, which variables can predict the dependent variable and which, which ones are not. And uh, as we have proceeded uh, in this course, we have also found that, uh, of course, we can also uh, add more complexity to the model. For example, we might want to also model some uh, nonlinear effects. We could use, for example, some polynomials such as quadratic. Uh, we could use some kind of log transformations. Uh, um, then we also also have discussed that, okay, we could have dummy variables, but we could have not just intercept dummies, but we could have slope dummies and, uh, and, uh, and so on. So uh, very easily, the, the number of potential models that we could fit into the data is uh, exploding to, to very large number. So uh, nowadays, it's very common in empirical modeling practice that uh, researchers are, are estimating uh, multiple different models and, and seeing that, uh, that, uh, that, well, basically learning how does it work, what, what, kind, of, uh, what kind of variables uh, uh, seem to work well, what kind of don't. And, and that's very, very, very common practice, uh, particularly because, uh, because uh, running another regression model doesn't really cost much time or, or money, so, so it's very easy to, to add some additional explanatory variables or delete some. So if you want to do it in a, in a more systematic fashion, then, then uh, uh, there are two, two approaches uh, discussed in the literature, which could be called uh, simple to general versus uh, general to simple. Uh, so if, if you want to do this kind of like a model specification search more systematically, you could do in the first of all, sa same way as we have done with the hedonic modeling here. So start building the model from a very simple model and then then add add uh, gradually more and more explanatory variables and and uh, meanwhile you can use the specification test like the the f test that we introduced before or, or the t test and uh, and uh, and continue on when until you have uh, exhausted all of the explanatory variables uh, however there is potentially this uh, omitted variable bias that uh, that uh, I will discuss with you shortly. So in that sense, the simple to general approach is not really recommended. I will explain you, I will explain you why in a, in, a, in a short while. Then the opposite approach would be to start with a, with a very general model. So from the start with the, put everything in the model, all, all explanatory variables and all kind of interactions and, uh, and, and, uh, uh, intercept and slope dummies and nonlinearities and so on. 
Um, however, this can be also diffi difficult if you have uh, lots of uh, potential explanatory variables. Uh, and uh, and uh, then the idea is to, to test for the significance and exclude uh, in variables that turn out to be insignificant. But that's also not, uh, not really highly, highly recommended. So, so in my, my view, it can be very confusing that how, how would you do this kind of, kind of uh, modeling strategy? And if you are doing, for example, a thesis work, uh, it might be that, uh, that even, uh, even your supervisors have some, some uh, uh, particular idea or they, they subscribe to certain school of thought. But uh, it would be important to uh, be aware of potential pitfalls in these type of uh, type of modeling strategies. And uh, also some 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 researchers would advise that you need to carefully test for any any specification and, and run multiple specification tests that also might 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 have some pitfalls. So this is why I think it's very, very important to understand some basics about the modeling strategy. That, that that how to how to do this kind of uh, search for the for the appropriate model specification in a in a rigorous fashion and not fall to some kind of uh, kind of uh, wishful thinking okay so let's start with the problem with the, with the simple to general approach and the problem there is called omitted variable bias so i will explain you the omitted variable bias in the in the simplest uh, thinkable way, assuming that uh, that we have uh, have uh, just two two explanatory variables in the true model, so so here uh, the true model includes uh, x two and x three and the and the corresponding coefficients uh, beta two and beta three, so that's the simplest uh, thinkable case, and uh, suppose that we now omit this uh, x three. So this is what we mean. We, 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 we are ignorant and we, we do not include x3 in the model, but rather we, we just use a single regression with a single explanatory variable x2. And suppose that we are mainly interested in this, uh, this, uh, this impact of uh, uh, x2 variable, namely, namely this uh, beta2 parameter. So this uh, x3 is just some kind of... Uh, additional nuisance parameter we are not sure that uh, that uh, do we need it or not but uh, but uh, we prefer to not include it and we just omit it from the model so what is the what is the possible problem about that so now we need to recall some results from the previous uh, lesson so firstly remember that uh, that uh, in the single regression case we calculate the uh, uh, this uh, estimated slope coefficient b2 as the ratio of the sample covariance of x2 and y and the sample variance of x2. So to gain some insight on the omitted variable bias, now we can uh, now we can uh, insert again this uh, this correct model specification in place of y. Notice now that uh, that our, our single regression model is is no longer correctly specified in contrast to how we how we studied the bias for example so so now we insert this uh, uh, model specification where x3 is also present so this gives us then then this additional component to the to the to the equation so we see that uh, then b2 is equal to beta2 and and then then we also have this impact of this uh, x3 variable and that would be equal to beta 3 times sample covariance of x2 and x3 divided by the sample variance of x2 and then we have the uh, have this uh, uh, error term which is the sample covariance of x2 and epsilon divided by sample variance of x2 so again it's exactly the same formula that we have studied earlier in the context of uh, statistical properties so we use the same formula for the unbiasedness but in that case we assume that the model was correctly specified, so this uh, uh, term with beta 3 and sample covariance of x2 and x3 divided by sample variance of x2, that was not present because the model was correctly specified. So now we are essentially studying uh, a misspecified model. So then if we take the expected value of, uh, of, the, uh, of this uh, b2, to, to 
assess the possible bias or unbiasedness. So we still assume that uh, that uh, this our explanatory variable x2 is uncorrelated with the error term epsilon. So the expected value of the sample covariance uh, uh, will go to zero. So then we have that uh, that the expected value of b2 is equal to beta3. But now we have also this possible source of bias, namely beta3 times covariance of x2 and x3 divided by variance of x2. Notice that when we take the expectation, then this sample covariance becomes the population covariance because sample covariance is, uh, is an uh, unbiased estimate of the population counterpart. Okay. So therefore, this equation highlights you the the omitted variable bias. So, so now, if we have misspecified the model, we omitted this uh, this variable x three, which is actually present in the in the true model. Then uh, we would only obtain an unbiased estimate in in uh, in uh, two cases. One possibility is that if this beta three is equal to zero, so that would mean, in fact, that uh, that uh, that uh, the model was correctly specified after all. But if beta 3 is not equal to zero, as we, as we assume, then we would need to have that these variables x2 and x3 are uncorrelated. So then this covariance of x2 and x3 would be equal to zero. So if we have some uncorrelated uh, variable that, uh, that should be in the model, then, uh, then we can harmlessly exclude it without any bias. But if we leave out some, some, some explanatory variable uh, which correlates with our x2, then, then uh, we have potentially omitted variable bias. And we see from this formula that this bias increases uh, if the absolute value of this coefficient beta3 increases, namely the more important the, the omitted variable would be in the true through regression equation. And also, the higher the correlation between x2 and x3, then the larger the bias. On the other hand, sir, on the other hand, variance of this x2 can help to dampen this bias. So the larger the variance of x2, then, then, then proportionately smaller the bias. So intuitively, what is the what is this omitted variable bias then that uh, that uh, Notice that uh, when we do not exclude this uh, x3, so in some sense, if we, if we leave out this uh, uh, x3, then anyway, the impact of this x, x3, if it is present in your, in your empirical data, then this impact of x3 then indirectly influences uh, this, uh, this um, coefficient of this beta2, particularly if x2 and x3 are correlated. So in that sense, uh, this uh, estimated uh, B2, it's not only capturing the direct effect of our X2 variable, which would be this beta2, but it also get this kind of indirect uh, effect of, of this, uh, of the, through this correlation between X2 and X3. And this is the essence of the bias, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, part of this, uh, this estimated coefficient B2 also captures this impact of this omitted X3. So in other words, the, the, we do not have a clean impact of this x2. It's also then then uh, capturing the effect of x3, which is not in the in the model. And uh, this is particularly relevant if you are interested in the marginal effect of the of the x2 x2 variable. So we will later in the next theme we will discuss the endogeneity. Uh, problem. So uh, I already paved a way towards that topic by mentioning that uh, that uh, in fact this omitted variable bias is one of the cases where this uh, exogeneity assumption fails. So so in that sense, this zero conditional mean assumption is no longer valid. And this is because because when we omit this variable x three, then its impact is attributed to the error term. But because this uh, x2 and x3 are correlated, then, uh, then the zero conditional mean assumption gets violated. So omitted variable bias is one of the cases of the endogeneity problem where this zero conditional mean assumption uh, is violated. So 
So <clears throat> this is also has an important lesson on the on the modeling uh, modeling strategy because um, because if you start from a, from a, let's say single regression model and gradually add more and more explanatory variables, so there is a possibility that uh, that all of the models that we are comparing and testing are subject to the omitted variable bias. If if the true model actually has has much more explanatory variables, and if those uh, those explanatory variables are correlated with those those variables that are included in the model, so. And also, I point out here that the bias is not restricted to the coefficients, but also the standard errors would be also biased. So, uh, so if it is a, if it is a wrongly specified model, and the and the and the basic assumptions of the OLS estimate are violated, then then uh, the statistical inferences can be biased as well. So this is why I highlight that this kind of gradual development of the hedonic model is mainly used for pedagogical purposes that uh, that uh, that I, I because I want to introduce to this uh, uh, econometric modeling tools uh, not everything directly but 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 on in a step by step manner so uh, so uh, but but when you when you do in the real world some econometric modeling then this is not necessarily a good idea to start from a simple and then then uh, then build uh, build gradually at least you shouldn't uh, shouldn't completely rely on these uh, these um, statistical tests in in kind of uh, uh, too naively. Uh, it can be, of course, of course, it, like practically for for learning yourself, it can be can be helpful to 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 apply this kind of uh, simple to general. Start first with the simple model to gain more insight and add add more variable. Mainly, mainly what I want to warn you is about the, the relying too much on the specification tests in, in this regard. Okay, so particularly that when you when you are adding more variables, that uh, that uh, if some of the variables turn out to be insignificant, then then do not automatically throw them away because because your model might be still still misspecified at that stage. And uh, and finally, it also indicated that how this uh, how this uh, um, impact on the, for example, the, if if you are mainly interested in the marginal effect of square meters, that uh, that I here illustrated that uh, how large differences we have obtained uh, for the for this marginal effect depending on what kind of other variables we included in the model. So so we started with this kind of five thousand four hundred sixty one euros per square meter in the single regression model. When we expanded to the multiple regressions, and particularly when the number of rooms was also included, then the marginal effect increased to almost seven seven thousand euros per square meter. But then, when we added more more explanatory variables to control for the heterogeneity with the dummy variables, also then suddenly the marginal effect decreased to 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 less than four thousand. So so it can be that uh, that this kind of gradual model building doesn't necessarily lead to lead to gradual development in this uh, uh, slope coefficient, it can also also take such kind of uh, quite dramatic turns. Uh, at first it is increasing, but then then drops completely when you add, add more variables. So in that sense, also the, the single regression and even multiple regression might also include some, some um, with, the, with the square meters might be correlated with some, some other factors that, that, that are then captured better in this model with, with dummy variables. Okay. So I will continue the discussion of modeling strategies in the next uh, video where I will discuss uh, also about uh, what is the risk of including some variables that uh, are not in the true model specification, which are referred to as redundant variables. And, uh, and then I will also also later talk about the pretest estimation. So thanks for your attention.